I was born, born and raised in the Sunshine Coast and I was raised by my grandmother and uh, she talked to us at the kitchen table. That's where I get all my stories, all the information sitting around there. And then, you know, living here and walking the land is what we sort of talk about and, uh, you know, protecting things that need to be protected and just following the laws. And so, you know, I get the opportunity to talk about that local knowledge, that perspective come from the Aboriginal people, how they saw the land and what the land sort of provided. I've been gifted with a little bit of skill with the hand. I can draw a bit. I use that talent a bit and and try and create some of the stories with the art, yeah. And a lot of the patterns that you see in the art are patterns and designs, artwork that was from this district. I've done a number of uh, of seasons in the painting and I've basically called it uh, his native place. That's a, a, a phrase that was coined by one of our great uncles. Well, my grandfather, great-grandfather's brother, Herb Chili, uh, when they asked him about, you know, his connection and the way he labelled this place, he called it his native place. I did sort of uh, season indicators stories, stories that pertain to, uh, oh, you know, where the people saw, saw a plant or something flower or lose its bark, they could, they knew what was in season, where, where they needed to be camping and waiting for that food at. Uh, first one being uh, the mullet migration story, where the sea eagle sort of pictured in the middle of the painting, and it's sort of signifying that uh, this animal was our uh, ally and, and the fact that it helped us um, know when to start the hunting for the fish. I see him every time you go out there, you always see him, see him or her. But you know, that one is a symbol of that mullet season when the red stringy bark loses its bark. The mullet are running up into our district for spawning. The temperature of the water is perfect. And so they're coming up here to release all of their eggs in the warm temperature water. All along the coastline from basically Morton all the way to Fraser, you had mullet run. Uh, you know, but leading on from the mullet, you know, you've got the, the story of the dolphin. I've put the dolphin in there. The dolphin was another animal that was our ally, just like the sea eagle. We would never hurt the dolphins. We would never hurt the sea eagles. We'd only hunt the mullet fish. You know, but that sea eagle, as we said, you know, it told us when we could start the hunt. So the mullet was here, but we didn't enter the water until the sea eagle started the hunt. It taught us that we couldn't hunt the leaders, that the followers, the juveniles are the ones you're allowed to hunt. So when the leaders pass through the water, nothing gets hunted until they pass through our district, our part of water. We see the sea eagles in our district striking the top of the water, then we will enter the water, only then. You know, your nets, your spears, your canoes are, are poised and ready to enter the water as soon as the seagull strikes. As the mullet season continues, the mullet's still here for a couple of months spawning. And you know, the first hunt, we've, we've eaten all our mullet. Let's go down and get some more. And so, you know, you might need a, a different technique of catching. Uh, this is the way that people did it in this district. They, uh, they used the dolphins and they used to uh, call out to them, even call out to their names in the song and, uh, and slap the water with their spears or make some of type of commotion at the water's edge, usually in a bay area or on a point where the fish can be herded into and caught and the dolphins respond with the signal, the tapping of the water percussion and they respond by coming towards the coastline at the same time they're uh, they're scaring any fish in those deeper waters towards shallower waters, towards the coastline, driving the fish towards us. But you know, one of the most important things is the portion of the catch is given back to the sea eagles, to the dolphins most importantly. And then you sort of come up the rivers, and in the rivers there, you know, you've got um, abundance of other food, from your shellfish to your mud crabs. You know, really I, I did a mud crab one. I grew up in this area and the mud crab was our, one of our favoured, I'd have to say, one of my favourites. And the uncles were their providers. 
I'd wake up to the smell of the mud crabs cooking on the pot. They just got home and they just wanted to cook a feed before they go to have a little bit of a camp because they've been out all night. You know, I'd have two straight off the bat, hot straight out of the pot with um, bread that he just got from the bakery. And yeah, it was one of my favourite sort of uh, things growing up here, eating. Uh, and so I thought, yeah, incorporate that story and then, you know, tell about the, the season of it. There's a tree. It grows around here everywhere. Just like the red stringy bark is the indicator for the mullet, the batwing coral tree is indicator for the mud crabs. It's the one that sort of tells you now they're full, now they're fat. This is the best time to eat them. That flower, and it's an orangey bloom, orangey red bloom. And so, you know, you're thinking, well, what's that got to do with the mud crab? But then you sort of realise, oh yeah, that's what the colour is when it's cooked. And so I've incorporated that, put that orangey bloom in there with the batwing coral leaf, very distinctive leaf. The mud crab, very distinctive animal, you know. Um, but then, you know, I also incorporated that black swan in there. That black swan is a very important figure for the Maroochee River. Maroochee is the word for the black swan. It's a compound word. It's got three words involved, Maroochee door. You've got muru is nose, uchi is red, door or da is place of. So the place of the red nose, or the place of the black swan. Our families would hunt them in molting season, um, but some, some people that were related to them, like their totem, they wouldn't touch them. And so there is the, the story of, you know, the black swan and how it sort of uh, moulds into the creation story of how the Maroochee River came to be. So I put that black swan in just to, 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 to sort of, you know, people uh, understand that um, Maroochee cried her tears in the story, which created the, the salty uh, waters of the, the river. And then also in the background, uh, it's very hard to sort of see, uh, but I've got, a, I've got a carpet snake twirling around the sun sort of thing. <laughs> He's in the background. He's uh, a symbol of this area. And the season indicator for him uh, was really your, um, your old passion fruit. And whenever that's in bloom, people were allowed to eat the carpet snake. And some people didn't, you know, like our family didn't. We didn't because it was our totem animal. And these are stories that relate to this land. They're not anybody's owner of it. It's something that people knew that lived here. And so I want to continue on that uh, tradition and keep up the knowledge of the, the landscape that the people that live here now, I feel are the next people to be the carers of it, the custodians. So informing them about those stories can help them achieve it. So, you know, a great opportunity to do it here at the Sunshine Coast Airport, where you've got international, you know, people coming in now. So it's uh, getting very broad, but, you know, to get that out there as part of the, you know, what they see and experience here, uh, I think that's, uh, that's a great, great thing for me to, to be a part of.